everybody. This is Dr. Nigro with a Physics Fundamental screencast. This screencast is going to be the first in our series of screencasts looking at vectors and their uses in physics. Now, vectors is a word that we should have heard in our math classes, but we indicate a vector by using an arrow. And that arrow is going to have two pieces of information. It's going to have a magnitude. And that magnitude is represented by the length of the arrow. And it should also indicate the direction of that vector, which we use the angle of that vector versus 90 or 0 or 180 or 270 to determine which way the vector is pointing. All right, now some examples of vector quantities in physics include some we've already worked with, so displacement. All right, that's our change in position. All right, we've also talked about velocity being a vector quantity and acceleration. All right, now there are additional vector quantities in physics. The main one that we will be dealing with later is force. All right, but we haven't gotten to force yet. We're going to be talking about why motion occurs the way it does in later units. But for now, displacement, velocity, and acceleration are all vector quantities which we should be familiar with. All right, now what can we use our vectors to do? All right, well, one of the first things we can use a vector for is to give directions. All right, we know that the length of the vector tells us the magnitude, but we can also use vectors and put them together as a way to give a map from one point to another. All right, now before we can do that, you have to pick a reference point. All right, and that reference point gives the person using your directions a place to start. If you give someone a set of directions but don't tell them where to start, they could end up anywhere. So we need a reference point. All right, when we then verbalize each individual segment of our set of directions, that directional component tends to follow a similar form. We give a degree, so number of degrees. And then using our compass points, north, south, east, and west, we say which side of our reference direction. All right, so an example of what this would look like is if we were telling someone how to get somewhere and we said, okay, you're need to, going to need to go 45 meters and it needs to be in the direction of 65 degrees north of east. All right, and that indicates which direction that particular segment of our trip needs to occur in. All right, we can also add vectors. All right, and that's particularly helpful in conjunction with our directional piece because most directions you give are going to be more than one step. It's not going to be one step, point A to point B. Sometimes we have to do a triangle or, you know, we have to get all the way around. All right, so we need multiple vectors and we need to add them together. All right, now the vectors need to be added in a manner called tip to tail. All right, where you take the tip of your first vector and you start the tail of your second and then you draw it as indicated by the directions. And then you take the tip of your second vector and you add your third. And then you just work your way all the way through all of your vectors. All right. Then we attach or connect what's called the resultant. Oops. The resultant vector to the origin and then the end of the last vector, the tip of the last vector. So we connect it from the origin to the tip of the final vector. All right, and we're going to do some examples of all of these down below. All right. All right, and then finally, something that's useful is that we can break, oops, break resultant vectors, or any vector for that matter, into horizontal and vertical components. All right, what we end up doing is putting together a lot of right triangles. All right, if we have a series of vectors 
and we don't know enough about our resultant vector, we can actually take the components of our initial vectors, add them, and calculate the components of our resultant vector. All right, and throughout this unit, we're gonna do a lot of practice with all of this. All right, so again, a vector has to have, it's depicted by an arrow, and that arrow will have a length, which indicates the magnitude, and then we'll be pointing in a specific direction, which tells us the direction of that particular vector. All right, we can use those vectors to give directions, we can add vectors to one another in the tip to tail method, and then we can break our resulting vectors, or any vector, into its horizontal and vertical components. All right, so we're gonna run through each one of these. All right, we'll start with directions. All right, so you've got three different vectors shown here and some compass points. All right, so first thing you need to identify your reference point. So I'm gonna circle my reference point. So this one, I'm gonna choose east to be my reference point. All right, and then if I look, the arrow is above east. So it is north of east. All right, now the portion that's north of east is this piece of the angle, and we know that the right angle is 90, so that's 70 degrees. So it is pointed 70 degrees north of east, so 70 degrees above the east compass point to the north, okay? All right, let's look at this one. All right, so this time I'm going to make, I'm going to make, I guess I'll make west my reference point. All right, so again, we're pointed above west, so we're going to be in that north of, but this time of west. And if we look, the angle of the vector above west is 30 degrees. So we would say 30 degrees north of west. All right, and then finally, our last one, this time I'm going to make north my reference point. All right, so it's going to be east of north. All right, if we look, this is the portion that is east of north. So it's 35 degrees below, so that means it must be 65 degrees up here. So we would say 65 degrees east of north. So we need to be able to decipher what these directions mean. All right, so remember, the first piece is in reference to the second. All right, so the second directional compass piece is your reference point. All right, now we can actually change our reference point and then rewrite that direction, all right? So for example, I've got 20 degrees east of north here, all right? So if I drew my compass pieces, here's east and here's north, 20 degrees east of north, so I'm going to be to the east side of the north compass point and I'm going to be at about 20 degrees, so that looks about like that, all right? So this would represent 20 degrees east of north, but I could look at it in reference to east, which would be my blue arrow, all right, and this is going to be 70 degrees, so I can rewrite this as 70 degrees north of east. So these two directions both mean the same thing, it just depends on what you are using as that reference point. All right, let's try the second one. We've got north of west, all right, so here's north and west. All right, and the direction reads 35 degrees north the rest. So 35 degrees north, so above that west compass point. So it would look like this. All right. But again, I have this portion of the angle. I could read it in this way with north as my reference point. So this is 65 degrees. So I could rewrite that direction as 65 degrees west of north. All right. And again, they mean the same thing. The vector didn't move. It just depends on your reference point. All right, so we should be able to recognize how to use these different directional instructions along with the magnitude of that vector. All right, now in addition, right, we can sketch the addition of vectors using the tip to tail method. All right, and what that means is we've got the tail is here and the tip is here. So we start with our first vector. All right, we're going to do the A plus C. So we draw the A plus C, so here's vector A, 
And then starting at that tip, we draw C, which is going to be back in this direction. All right. So the tip of A is connected to the tail of C. Now the resultant is from the origin to the tip of the final vector. So I've drawn it in red here. All right. So this would be the sum. This would be our resultant vector, which would be the sum of vector A plus vector C. All right. Let's try it again. This time we're going to connect D and F. All right, so we've got vector D, which is pointing down like this. All right, and then we're going to connect F. We're going to start at the tip of D, and F points in this direction. All right, now to add in our resultant, we go back to our origin, and then we connect to the tip of our final vector, and that will be our resultant vector for that addition. All right, we're not going to do A plus C again because that's boring. We'll choose something else. All right, let's see what looks interesting. Why don't we do B and E? Let's do that. B plus E. All right, so we start with B. We're going to point it up just like this, just like it shows. All right, now E is pointed up at an angle like this. So you can see again, I took the tip of B and connected it to the tail of E. And then my resultant is going to look something like this, where I take the origin of B and connect it to the tip of E. So here's E, and then our resultant is here. All right, and then finally we'll look at A and G. Whoops, wrong color. All right, so we start with A. All right, and then we have G. Now they both point in the same direction, so our resultant is the sum of these two. It's going to look a little weird, but it's this whole piece that would be our resultant here. Okay, so it's really important that you remember it's tip to tail. It's very tempting sometimes to start everything at the origin, but it's got to be added in a tip to tail method. All right, all right. Now, what about the component piece? All right, so we've got X and Y components. Remember, the X component is our horizontal component, all right, and the Y component is our vertical component, okay? So if we look at vector A, we've got the X component and the Y component. To calculate the X, I'm just going to count over boxes. So here's one and two. So I would say that's two. And then if I look at the Y piece, one and two. So that's two. So each component here is two. Now, before we get too far, just a piece of information about signs. All right, generally speaking, here's our x and y axes, all right? If you are above that zero line, you're positive in terms of y. If you are below the zero line, you're negative in terms of y. If you are to the right in terms of x, you are positive. And if you are to the left, you are negative, all right? Here, down below, this would be a positive x as well. Right, if I look, now we're below, so this is going to be a negative y, and then if we're above, a positive y, and this would be a negative x. All right, so x, y, x, just so you know what the signs go with, x, y, x, y. All right, so you can see in the upper right and lower left quadrants, we have negative, negative, and positive, positive, and then the two signs are swapped. So when we're doing our components, for problem number four here, we need to keep that in mind. That's going to be important. we got to remember our signs. All right, so back to what we were doing. Let's look at D. All right, so if we look at vector D, all right, the Y component is one, two, three boxes up, but there is no horizontal piece here, so that's going to be zero, and that's fine. If you have a horizontal piece or a vertical piece with no angle, then one of your two components will be zero. All right, let's look at E. Oh, well, here's a good example. All right, this vector also has no horizontal component, so it's going to be zero for our x component. And now we've got one, two, but they're pointing down. So these are negative values, so we say negative two for that component of E. All right, and then finally, we're going to look at F. All right, if we look at F, it is up one component, one box. So we have a y component of one, and it's one, two, three to the left for x, which are negative values, so negative three. And we can continue on with all of these. We could look at b, which is going to be one, two, three, four. 
All right, so b sub x equals 4, and then it's 1 up, so b sub y equals 1. And we can work our way through all of these. All right, I do want to point out h quickly, all right, because h has an x component of 1, 2, 3, but if you notice, it has no vertical component, so its y component would be 0. All right, so that's how we can break a vector into its horizontal and vertical components. All right, now what we're going to do is take components and actually draw what the vector looks like. All right, so what we do is we pick a point. So I'm going to start here for A, and it tells me that A has an X component of 4. So I'm going to go over four boxes. So here would be one of my component vectors, my purely horizontal vector. All right, then tip to tail, I'm going to go up 2, just like my Y component tells me to. And then as we saw above, I'm going to connect the tip to the tail to get my resultant vector. So this is my resultant vector if I have a component of 4 for my horizontal and a component of 2 for my vertical. All right, let's try B. All right, again, pick a point to start. I'm going to, st whoops, I probably shouldn't start there. Let's give myself a little room here. Let's go here. All right, so this is going to be B. Right, my x component is negative 2, so I need to go two boxes to the left for that b sub x component. And then my y component is 3, so I need to go up 1, 2, 3 boxes. All right, whoops, that's a little crooked. I'll fix that. 1, 2, 3. And this is going to be my b sub y. And then my connector it's going to start in my origin and then connect tip to tail to that final vector. So th this would be my B resultant vector. All right. Try C. All right. If we just pick right here. So this is going to be my C vector. All right. My X component is 5. So I'll go over 5 boxes. All right. And then my Y component is 0. So there's no vertical piece. So when it comes to the resultant, it's going to be just that component. All right. So that resultant is also equal to the x component for this particular vector. All right, and then we're going to end with d. All right, so we'll use this color. All right, so we have a negative 2. So I'm going to go over 2 to the left, and this is going to be my d sub x. All right, then tip to tail, it says negative 3, so I'm going to drop down 3. Whoops. Just stay on my line. There we go. All right, and this is going to be d sub y. And then my connector will be from that origin to that final tip, and that will be my d sub r, my resultant vector. All right, so if you have components, you just draw each component in its purely horizontal and purely vertical way in a tip-to-tail fashion, and then you connect your resultant from the origin up to the tip. All right, so remember, all these additions are tip-to-tail. And that resultant connects the origin to the tip of the final vector. Okay? All right, so these are just the basics. There's obviously a lot more that we can do with our components and our vectors, which are going to cover in some later screencast. All right. But if you have any questions about these, please let me know. Okay.